Melissa Mitchell's backyard is big. So big, there's ample room for six-year-old Ryan to play baseball. But look a little further. You know, it's always been an eyesore for us. Dozens of vehicles sit untouched. Melissa says some of these old trucks haven't moved in years. It's sat there. If any of us ever went to sell, it would be a major um, problem with property values. And, you know, no one wants to live with that in their backyard. It isn't just these abandoned vehicles Melissa is worried about. She's also concerned about a homeless man she says comes out from the woods and uses these vehicles to sleep in. And according to her, this man is terrorizing the neighborhood. But since this gentleman has been going door to door and, and kind of opening mailboxes and asking people for things, it is very disconcerting when a lot of us have children. They're playing in the backyard and we worry for their safety. We called this number on this sign, but it was disconnected. After some digging, we found the owner of Wolverton Tree Service lives in Palo. He says he's aware of the problem, but when we asked him about the abandoned vehicles, he said they all run and they're all registered. But do cars surrounded by waist-deep weeds really run? Are they really registered? According to Melissa, they don't appear to be. We feel like we are providing any potential homeless person a place to live, and that's not what we want to do. On Monday, the owner of Wolverton Tree Services said these old cars and trucks and waist-deep weeds are not abandoned. Hey, Jerry. Hey, anything new with the uh, tree the service? Off. Well, you lied to me. You no. said those cars were abandoned. Were not abandoned. They were abandoned. A lot of them don't work, Gary. Gary, just come out here and talk to us. Come on. You take the camera off. Well, I... Then will you talk to us after that? Yes, I will. Gary Wolverton did not want us back on his property, so we're in Melissa Mitchell's backyard. If you take a look over here, this is the fence line, and you can see just how close these vehicles really are. Now, during our conversation, Wolverton admitted he's been negligent and ensures the problem will be fixed. Wolverton tells us 10 of these vehicles are junk. He says he neglected the problem because the price for scrap metal is at an all-time low. But he's willing to change his ways. In 10 days, he'll begin removing the vehicles. I'm thrilled that he's willing to do that. I appreciate the fact that he knows that those do need to be removed. But the problem started long before our story aired. Melissa says she contacted the city, but nothing was done. It is disappointing that you leave messages and you don't get a call from your own city government. Because I never heard back from them, I decided to contact you guys. I feel like right after this story aired, my phone rang off the hook the next day and we're getting results.